Daniel here for Tabletop for One, and my first impressions after four plays of Come Sail Away. And I thank you for joining me tonight. Now, Come Sail Away is the latest offering by Sashi and Sashi. It is actually the first game by Sashi and Sashi that I have purchased or, or even played. I haven't played any of the other titles. And so this is a new one that I just ordered recently, and I guess it's getting a lot of buzz because uh, Dice Tower mentioned it, and it's just been going around. Now, it's not readily available, although you can get it straight from the publisher with a uh, hefty price tag on the shipping, so just keep that in mind. But I would imagine it'll have wider U.S. distribution at a later date. Now in Come Sail Away, you are in charge of bringing passengers onto an ocean liner, assigning them to their rooms, escorting them to different facilities, lounges, and that sort of thing. The heart of the game is a Moncala type meeple placement game where you're trying to place meeples in different rooms, matching different colors and patterns for those rooms, filling them up to earn the most points. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the production quality. Now this may be a $40 game, but it comes with a good amount of components. I mean, you get a, a ton, a ton of meeples, the little passenger meeples, and most everything is cardboard or these nice linen finished cards that they have. So the quality of the game is really good for the price. I, I think it's right about the, the correct price for this game. And the art is really good, and, and the graphic design is done really well because this is a language independent game. After you've learned the rules, you don't need to know the language because all the cards and everything are just symbols and numbers. And so it's, it, you know, the graphic design is done so well it communicates everything perfectly. Now, as far as the gameplay goes, you're going to have a variable setup of different rooms. You'll have five rooms, which are cabins, and they'll have uh, one for each color. And so there are five colors in the game. And then you'll have five other rooms that are called facilities, and they require different kinds of patterns or sequences of meeples to be placed in those rooms. And then for the solo mode, you're going to have bonus scoring goals that uh, you have to complete before the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds. And so you have five goals, and you're trying to complete those before those rounds end. If you do, you'll gain bonus points. Now, the way the game plays is on your turn, you're gonna draw two cards from the deck. You're gonna look at those two cards, they're gonna have different meeples on them. And so they'll have a pattern of meeples. It could be anywhere from two to four meeples. If it's the three or four meeple card, you'll get to place those meeples out on your ship. And the way you place meeples is that you're gonna place them kind of in a snake pattern. And so you'll start with one room, you can pick any room. You'll start with one room, and then the next one has to be an adjoining room. And so there's different pathways throughout the ship. There's a grand staircase in the middle that is connected to six different rooms, whereas most of the other rooms are connected to one or two, maybe three rooms. And so you're trying to place these out. Now you have to place them in order on the card, either forwards or backwards. So you can choose which order you want to place them. But uh, you'll want to place them so that they match the patterns of the room requirements or match the colors for the main cabin. And then there's also meeples that have a luggage token on them on the card. If you place those, you'll move up the luggage track, which gets you access to new rooms or gets you free meeple placements and stuff like that. Now, one thing to note when you're placing meeples in the ship with the three and four meeple cards is that you can never return to the same room that you've already placed that turn and you can't loop back around. And so you, you have to go into rooms you haven't been in that turn. Now the two meeple card is a little bit different. You're able to place those meeples anywhere on the ship and as long as it matches you know, the, the color requirements or the pattern requirements of that particular room. Now any meeples that you can't place on your turn, they go to the disgruntled area. And those are negative uh, victory points at the end of the game, one point each. And so you wanna avoid that as much as possible. But as you're playing, you're going to be filling in rooms, and as you fill in rooms, they're going to give you different bonuses. And so the five main cabin rooms will grant you a movement up on that luggage track, and some of the five facilities that you fill in will grant you bonuses such as placing a meeple somewhere on your ship or uh, removing them from the disgruntled area. Now, all of the rooms will grant you victory points at the end of the game. Your movement up on the luggage track will grant you victory points, as well as any meeples that are placed in any rooms except the grand staircase at the end of the game will grant you points. And so after 12 rounds, the game will end and you'll score your points to see how well you did on the ranking. Now, as far as replayability goes, I have to say that the different uh, setups each game 
don't really change the game that much because of the random card draw. See, the random card draw already makes things kind of random, and so if you have random placements of rooms and stuff like that, it really doesn't change the game that much. Plus, the different types of rooms, some of the rooms are the same, like some of the facilities are the same as others, and some of them are different, but they all kind of function similarly. It's just not enough to really change the game. But the game is very quick. It's only like 20 minutes to play. So it's e easy to set up, reset, and play again. And you can play through a game real quick. You can play the game multiple times, probably three or four times in an hour. And so there's a lot of playability there. It just depends on whether you like the gameplay itself. Now, as far as the ease of solo play, th there is no AI to operate here. It's just a beat your own score solo mode. And I find that slightly lacking, which I'll talk about more in my recommendation. But the fact that it's a beat your own score solo mode and it's so easy to play, there's not a lot of challenge here. And so that definitely counts against it. And so I guess I might as well go right into my recommendation. Do I recommend this game? Uh, not really. It's not that like this is a bad game, okay? This is not a bad game. I think it's a, a well-designed game. It's a fun game. But for the solo mode, there's something lacking. See, I've played this game six times now. The first game I scored like really low. I scored like in the low 40s, okay? The second game, I beat that highest score rank. So I was like 83 or 86 or something like that. I was way up there. And then every game after that, I was in the 70s. Low to high 70s, somewhere in the 70s. Because I felt like I had solved the game. And the only reason why I didn't score better in some of those games is because of the random card draw. The random card draw really felt like you know, it put me in a bind in certain situations and there, like there was nothing I could do about it. So after six plays, the game kind of is a little stale, you know, it, there's just not a lot to it. There's not a lot of decision space here. You know, I'd like the uh, Moncala type mechanic where you're placing in subsequent rooms and that sort of thing. I, I like that idea. I just don't see a lot of deep gameplay here. So I have a hard time recommending it as it is. The fact is, is I think this game would be better as a lower budget roll and write. I think it would be better as a $20 game where you're drawing cards or flipping over cards at like a flip and write. And, and you're deciding, you know, where to place the meeples and you just write them out, you know, maybe with colored pencils or markers or something like that. I think that would be so much better than the offering that it has here. And the fact is, is that this company has made roll and write versions of some of their games. And so I almost would say, wait until you see a roll and write version of this game or wait until you see a really cheap copy, like maybe $25 or something like that. Now I hear the multiplayer is good and it's more compelling because you're having to draft cards or, or choose one and pass one down and that sort of thing. You're also competing for those bonus goals. But with the solo mode, there's nothing to compete against. And you know me, I like beat your own score solo modes, but that's usually when the gameplay is compelling, when the decision space is you know vast, when I feel like I'm accomplishing something by my scoring and how well I did. In this game, I don't feel like I'm accomplishing anything anymore because I feel like I've solved the, uh, solved the game. And so I actually developed my own AI for this and I posted it on BGG. And so if you want to check it out and play it there, you can. I may even do a tutorial solo playthrough with my AI at a later date. We'll see. I, I probably have to balance it a little bit, but we'll see how that goes. But anyways, do I recommend this game? Maybe if you're going to play multiplayer too. I <laughs> know this is a solo channel, right? But the fact is, is I think this game really is going to shine more as a multiplayer game than it is as a solo game. And like I said, I think wait and see if they do a roll and write. They very well might do that. So I would wait for that. And so there you have it. That was my first impressions after six plays of Come Sail Away by Sashi on Sashi. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my review or what you think of the game if you played it. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.